thanks a lot for uh, for joining us. This is the Microsoft User Group Utah, uh, our guest webinar series. Of course, we're not having many live meetings, in-person meetings right now, but uh, the, the benefit, of course, we've done webinars, we've had guest speakers, uh, but there's a, a lot that's happening in the monthly activities. So we've got a, a speaker. I don't have it open in front of me here, but um, I'm looking to see. No, it's not scrolling fast enough. But yeah, we do have an event happening, I believe, next week. But uh, bef at the end of the recording, I'll have it up in front of me of our speaker of the next uh, event. Um, but uh, uh, please, if you're not yet following us out in Facebook, if you go and do a search on Mugget to the Microsoft User Group Utah, uh, then you know, please go and follow the page, like that, uh, and uh, participate, get involved, especially if you're here in the greater Utah area. Of course, the benefit of doing these and, uh, is, is we get to have great speakers from around the world participate. And uh, Prasanna, why don't you, you, why don't you introduce yourself and your topic on Microsoft Project and kick things off, let's just get going. All right, thank you for the introduction, Chris. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, we were just joking, I'm very happy to be live streaming from all the way from Hawaii, from a, from a live beach. Uh, I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, it's, so so realistic. Share my it's so realistic, <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, there is no, if you see some fuzzy screen, that's just the matrix glitching. Um, all right, so share my screen, let's bring this up. I guess I should say also say that, uh, so I'm recording this. We'll have this available tonight. Uh, it'll be out on YouTube. And uh, Prasanna, you're going to make your, sli your slides available afterwards as well. That's and true. so it'll all be on the blog post. We'll share it out on Facebook. So you'll be able to get access to everything. Excellent. Awesome. All right. So I'm assuming everybody can see my screen. So um, again, welcome everyone for, the, for this afternoon session. So first of all, let's start with the topic I'm going to cover. Uh, this is going to be a primarily a project management related topic and work management, okay? And I will, uh, I'll explain what I mean those, uh, by, by using those two terms and how I'm connecting those both, okay? Um, so before I say anything, I have to say this, all, my, all the opinions in this webinar are purely my own. Uh, this is all my self-research because I do work with, for a, a major global plumbing company and this does not reflect their opinions. Okay, so I had to put that disclaimer there. All right, uh, obviously under on Microsoft. Um, okay, so my name, uh, so I'm Prasanna Adavi. As you can see from the video, I, know I, I don't look anything like that picture because that picture is pretty old, but uh, I, it's my webinar, so I get to put whatever picture I want. Um, so I, I am a, a, um, a project MVP, um, so I have been since 2014. Um, work with a lot of uh, SharePoint peers, a lot of other other peers from Microsoft, um, and I have been a consultant for Microsoft Project Project Management in general for a long, long time. Um, so, the, and right now I'm in a different role, but that but that still keeps me going. I'm uh, I like to keep up to date with the trends, new tools, new software, new services coming from Microsoft. Yeah, yada yada. Yeah. So there is a website I have run a blog, uh, which I have the address here. And then I also run a podcast a little bit less frequently, less, inter and less uh, diligently than I used to, but feel free to follow me there, okay? Um, so what's my agenda today? Okay, so what am I even talking about? First of all, the, the reason for this webinar is Microsoft introduced a brand new Microsoft project. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are users of Microsoft project, Every single time I ask that question, there's always a uh, lukewarm response in terms of, uh, okay, I have dabbled with Microsoft Project, I have used it, I hate it, or I'm the complete Microsoft Project nerd. So it could be anywhere between those responses. Um, so if you are, if you are any, in any, any of those response categories, this webinar is for you because, um, and which I'll explain in detail. So let's talk through the agenda. Okay, so the good news is there's going to be a start and there's going to be an end. Okay, so I'm not going to talk forever, which is a relief for many, many people, if you, do, if you have not realized by now. All right, um, so we'll talk about the work management. Uh, what is work management? Why do I call it work management versus project management? Okay, and why do we need a new version of project? I mean, and why do we need a webinar about it? Microsoft Project version 
been released since uh, several several years um, and then why do we need a new webinar webinar for this new version you'll understand why as we go through the next section which is a huge chunk of my presentation which is the demos and examples okay and finally we'll take some Q&A but if you do have any questions in between feel free to stop me um, and I'll try to check the chat chat logs in between and Chris if you could help me with that any questions that would be awesome okay all right so let's talk about what is work management okay so this is the Gartner definition of what work management is uh, it's a set of software product services the apply workflow structure blah 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 so this come is uh, goes way above my head for me to understand so I made up my own definition um, I'm not saying this is the perfect one but I, this helps me simplify the concept at its core to me work management involves there are processes that generate information or tasks right and then there is products and services that organize the movement of that information um, if you take an example of um, moving a completing um, creating materials in your enterprise resource planning system then there, there's a movement of information there so there could be a project plan that tells you how to when to do complete which task by but at its core level the work somebody has to still do the work the management of that work is what I think of as work management now the what are the challenges with work management okay and why how does it differ from project management first thing is many today uh, PMI has come up with a new um, coin phrase over the last year called the project economy um, and to an extent I do agree with them so everything over the last few years every single thing has been is being called a project uh, by its pure definition project is something that has a defined output which has a start and an end date right so to uh, every single thing that falls under that category is a project lots of tools lots of people managing projects but there is no consistent methodology if you think take a step back and think of your own organization think of how many tools your organization uses to manage projects the primary one being Excel we cannot we can never escape from Excel right so um, some people use Excel some people use uh, use Jira some people use Asana some people use lots of other tools and if you are a Microsoft enthusiast obviously you're using Microsoft project project online project server etc but it's there is no consistent way of using these tools right that's our first problem the se second problem is the work is managed differently at different levels what do I mean by that when you're looking talking about a PMO or an enterprise level PMO project management organization what the information the, the way they look at work is different from an engineer who is just trying to get the work done and in the sandwich in between the, the the project managers are sandwiched in between those two levels where they are trying to plan the work but also get the work done and and the, when it comes to an engineer who's get, trying to get his work done that's where all these lists excels uh, note one note all these come into picture so they don't I don't, I've never seen an engineer uh, liking to use Microsoft project to manage their work right so by nature of how this work is managed differently at different levels the tools have accommodated themselves okay um, it is still it is the work has become more collaborative as this remote working has shown all of us we have become more collaborative we uh, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of tools where you can store your documents if you can collaborate on them send it for approvals you can work on timelines but it is still all messy it's it's not there is one there's no coherent story of okay how does the information flow from one place to the other how does a file flow from one place to the other obviously some organizations do a great job in stitching that story together regardless of the tools they're using but when you talk about an average organization it is almost uh, each department is choosing their own way to manage this work right so that's that's where it is and then the macro picture versus micro picture this ties back into point number two where work is being managed differently at different levels um, 
a an enterprise and an executive team is looking for a macro picture of okay just tell me the whole high, high level list of all the projects that are whereas the information that a a person who is actually assigned the task needs is completely different they are looking for tell me all the tasks i need to work across multiple systems across multiple departments now how do we stitch it together um, so one of the things that should come to your mind is microsoft teams which has become even more useful over the last few months and that's that's an prime example of where microsoft is trying to take us they are trying to provide a collaborative platform which will stitch all this together right so from a diagram standpoint here is what here is where i see it so from project and portfolio management there are several tools right so i'm just talking about uh, microsoft tool, set of tools here uh, obviously there are a lot many that could fit into this in the marketplace so we're talking about when we talk about project and portfolio management we have tools like microsoft project projects are online in some cases sharepoint or solutions built upon sharepoint right on the other hand we have work and task management which is primarily happening through emails uh, or i mean sharepoint comes to rescue again with the, with the lists libraries etc excel we talked about it one note i i have i have worked with groups where they run entire projects with one note a uh, granted one note is a great tool i i love it it is collaborative it is it is as free form as a uh, a document can be but then it's it is still not a great project management tool we can't you can't report on the tasks across multiple multiple tabs in one node right so for as an example and then the wonder list which actually uh, happens to be de deprecated uh, late earlier this month right so the but there is a gap between both project manager assigns a task but then the the person as the engineer who got assigned task assigned has to finish task in one of these tools so how do and today it's all manual collaboration and i'm hoping you can relate to this scenario regardless of the names of the tools you are able to relate to the scenario where you don't care about the project schedule only because it doesn't help you get your work done similarly a project manager would uh, would not delve deeper into your wonder list or worry about making sure you have all your tasks because he or she is more concerned about the project schedules right and then they all meet together and try to manually update status for each other update information for each other which creates this uh, disconnected scenario okay now here is my my version of where microsoft vision is um and and any if you have any questions please feel free to ask so the the idea is we still have all these tools but then we start putting in place certain tools that that bridge the gap between both okay one the first one i thought microsoft introduced and to a great success was planner uh, planner came out two to three years ago uh, if you are if you are not used planner already please you should take it take it for a spin uh, it is a very lightweight task management tool which beats uh, any similar trello boards or, or asana or any similar tools Okay, there's a lot of integration points that you can set up anyway but planner was microsoft's initial um, i won't say the first but it's it's a f first step in many in the, in the journey of adding many other tools so where it is bringing in this lightweight task management but it is still but is still connected to the enterprise level project and portfolio management while allowing this hands on task level management okay the second obvious platform is teams i know teams uh, i think of teams as a platform not just one tool which can actually bring all of this together but that was that was the next step in the microsoft journey of making building a unified platform that can connect these this project and portfolio management to the task management right and the third one in that group is what we are going to discuss today which is projects for web okay, this is the new microsoft project that i was referring to and we will delve deeper into it and you will see why i am so excited about it okay um and and then the idea is once you unify everything the project server and project online is uh, at some point will be deprecated uh, microsoft 
has announced that on their, their own blog. There is no timeline for it, so don't panic yet. But the, the eventual goal is pro to bring Project for Web on par with all the goodness of Microsoft Project that we have been got, we have gotten used to, and then let Microsoft the Project Server Project Online toolset uh, go away. Okay, um, you all know my, when the Wonderless became Microsoft To Do, so you know that, right? And then all of this is obviously supported by this automation tools, which the, uh, which is Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, uh, to bring everything together. So this is my version of how I see Microsoft's um, journey into building a unified platform that connects all the way from project portfolio management to all the way to the task management level, okay? Uh, with Teams being the hub and then everything else enabling to automate it. Okay, now let's talk about Project for Web. Okay, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with Microsoft Project. So the, it has a long history. Microsoft Project, the first version came out in 1984, which is almost uh, 36 years uh, so far. And then there were several versions that came out along the way. And then 2013 was when Project Online was released and there was Project Server versions, there were in between, which I don't show on this diagram yet, but I, I, from a landmark changes, as you can see, I'm tracking Project Online and then followed by Project for Web, okay? With this, the, the, the reason we are having this webinar, the reason we are talking about this is with this version, Microsoft chose to say, um, we need to revamp our thinking about Microsoft Project. Microsoft Project has always been this desktop tool. You know, again, talking about the desktop tool, there's a server version. But then it was, it, it was built from a viewpoint of a completely a project manager. If you have used a Microsoft Project, you know that. It is, it is not a task management tool. It is, and, and the most common complaint I get when I go to help somebody with Microsoft Project is the dates all change randomly, right? So everybody claim, complains that without understanding why it's changing. Um, so it's a heavy tool for a heavy hitter. Then there were the, the SharePoint kind of carried the load of being this lightweight task management and Lightweight, not even just task management, but lightweight work management. Maybe you are working on a mini project that is less than two to three weeks long. And that, but, but those tasks still need to be tracked. They, but you, you obviously won't um, spin up Microsoft project to track a two week project. So SharePoint carried that load. So eventually Microsoft realized that they needed, there was a tool that there was a need for a tool that we need, um, which kind of bridges that gap. Like SharePoint does not have um, all the scheduling engine functionality that comes with Microsoft Project. So that's what this is. This is about bridging that gap, okay? All right, so it's, it's cloud-based. It's part of the Office 365 suite. Um, and I'll, as I walk through the demo, you can, you can see it. So Project for Web, we are actually, um, it's three different, um, three different um, features that is collectively called a uh, the project for web. One is the project home. Again, I'll walk you through this in just a minute. The second is a roadmap feature functionality where you can plan high level roadmaps. And then the third one is the web-based project management and project scheduling experience. It's completely web-based, no tools to download, et cetera, and, and all the other niceness that comes with that. Okay, uh, project home is is a listing, it's so they, they have revamped how a project home looks like. Um, again, the goal here is not just a personal level collaboration tool. It is, in, it do, it, the goal is here to build a tool that works across enterprise while working for the individual themselves. So project home is a collection of all the projects, uh, quick and easy access. The nice thing about this is you can also see your roadmaps here, which I have on my next slide. So this is what a roadmaps looks like. Since the topic of this webinar is not roadmaps, I'm not going there, but the idea here is you will, um, bef long before any projects are created in any system, in any organization, there are roadmaps. You're thinking of projects that might happen next year or the year after, and you would like the visual way of representing that information for your stakeholders. 
So roadmap is a quick and easy way of saying, I would say, if you see on the screenshot, I can go click add a row and say, hey, here is my project. And the nice thing about this is because this is integrated, you can say, I already have a project for this and I want to show it as a roadmap. Uh, you can use it for portfolio and program planning. Program, if you are running a huge program with multiple sub projects, you can use the same thing. There are several, many, many blogs out there if you are really interested in learning about this. Many of my peers wrote a lot of detailed blogs about this. And in fact, a lot of automation around this uh, or customization uh, information is available around this. Okay. You know, I can say that this is well, this view is one of the most commonly requested, certainly from leadership teams. They want to have that, as you said, portfolio view of all the projects and be able to see start and stop dates and get and to have that. That, that high level that the, by the color coding, you know, like the, the high level visual of whether a project might be running behind schedule or something, but in this quick snapshot. And this is one of those things that I've built out, I don't know how many times in Excel and, you know, and, and, and uh, reporting services uh, so that, you know, executive teams can have this level of visibility. Yeah, every, every single consulting engagement I had, we have a request for this. We always try to tackle this through reporting, either it's, whether it's Power BI or SSRS before that, um, or any other tools like ClickView or Tableau. Uh, but now this is a feature that's built right into the tool. Okay, all right, so let's actually, uh, enough of the slides, so let's launch into the demo and look at the tool itself. Um, before I do that, I want to take a very quick pause. Any uh, questions? I nothing, I nothing posted so far, but uh, yeah, so everybody who's watching and I'm also, if you're watching the live stream over on Facebook, uh, you know, feel free to ask the question and I'll, uh, I'll interrupt you if there are any questions. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so what, what you are seeing on the screen is the project home that we talked about. Obviously, this is a brand new tenant, so I only have one project created, but as you keep creating projects, they, they keep showing up here. How do I do, how did I get the screen? I'm, I'm assuming everybody is familiar with the Waffle, the Office 65 Waffle, so if you click project, and that's where it will take you, okay? And here, you will actually have um, an option to create a new blank project. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Okay, so it, it, it's, everything starts by, by what looks like a blank screen, but you can actually see there are certain columns that have been pre-created. It comes up with an a, a, a untitled project as a title. Um, the general workflow for creating a project has always been, okay, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions, and until you answer all of those, I can't create a project for you, which is both good and bad. Let's say you are all you're trying to do is just quickly create a project to track your work. Um, those questions and answering long series of forms is a deterrent. So here, the creation of the project experience is very, very simplified. You can obviously change the name of the project just by clicking on the title. So I'm going to call it M-U-G-U-T Demo 2. Okay, and you can change the project manager if you will. Um, and then to set a start date. So I'm gonna leave those things as default, okay? Now, this is a grid view. So it is, a, you are fam if you're, you're familiar with many, many tools that do this, uh, the excitement from my side is because now it is part of Microsoft Project family, okay? So go ahead and click on add new task. So I'm gonna say uh, uh, scope and then hit enter. So start building my project. So if you notice, if you, if you, if you have any experience with, the Microsoft project framework. This is a completely radical change to how Microsoft project works, right? So Microsoft project requires, although they have introduced features over the years like manual scheduling and all that, but the fundamental concept of a good project schedule is you need to know who's going to work on the task. You need to specify the duration, effort, dependencies, start, finish, all that before you can go further. Okay, um, so this kind of 
takes the feedback over years and puts it in a web format. So it is not mandating you to put in all that other information. It is allowing you to create tasks as we go. So which is the most natural way of creating tasks, I feel. Like when you're creating a, working on a new initiative, you're not thinking through specific details and dates and everything. You want to just dump in all the tasks in your mind. So I'm going to say design, develop, and test and go live, okay, it's a, it's a small schedule, okay. Um, so you you have all the um, uh, functionalities that are coming from Microsoft Project, well, most of it from coming from Microsoft Project. So you can actually insert tasks in between. So, and then say, okay, I'm going to call this define scope, okay. And then I'm going to indent this to make it a subtask. So I'm going to make it a subtask so that I start building my work breakdown structure, right? So which um, if you are a project manager on this call, you will appreciate. Now, what about all these? Okay, where are my start and finish? So there are some predefined columns that you can add here and start and finish are some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and add start and finish. As you can see, there is a percentage complete. There is a um, there, there is a de dependency feature in here. There's an effort, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to add an effort, uh, and I'm going to add the depends depends on. Okay, so that's our dependency. So you can build all of this and start assigning people. Okay, so you cannot assign people to summary tasks, which uh, which has been a pain point for several years, and this has been a training issue for many many years. If you are a scheduling enthusiast. Uh, you know that assigning people to a summary task does not make sense, okay? So it is restricted in the new tool. So this will allow you to add people. So I can add myself because I created the project. Now, the one of the first steps when you initiate a project, even outside the tool, is to gather the team that will be part of your project, right? So how do you actually build a team? So if I'm, as, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here um, you are familiar with the Office 365 group framework, which which has become the de facto standard for providing security across multiple apps. So the same group can be a security control for your teams. It can be for your SharePoint site. It can also be your resource team for for this project for web that you are creating here. Okay, so you can. Um, you can create a group or, or um, and, and then add to group. So I'm going to, so I'm going to create a group and say, I want to add more people. So I'm going to say Brad, okay. So Brad Pitt, I'm going to say Russell Crowe, okay. All right, so I, so this is, I, I just built my project team. You could also have just search for that name without actually having to add them. So if I type for Russell, obviously it will come up right now, but if, we, if I did not add him to the team, you could have added that in this step as well, okay? Now, <laughs> this seems like such a no brainer where, okay, what's the big deal? Why is he talking so much about this? This is a completely 180 degree uh, uh, difference in how we actually work with project online or project server or Microsoft Project today. Um, project Online, Project Server don't even allow you to type in the name, which which adds three more steps for the just the building the project team part of it and assigning them to the uh, project schedule. Um, and this and you cannot I cannot I, I cannot tell you how many number of times people have expressed frustration about that feature. So um, so this to me is a huge huge improvement on what we have today. Okay. So, and then obviously, um, so I can assign more people. So there is a um, um, look ahead, obviously there, just type in one name. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that, okay? Well, so what, you can assign- I have to ask, uh, what kind of project rate does Brad Pitt charge? If I want to- <laughs> He's free for, for just for you, uh, Microsoft Utah, user group Utah members. Hey, I do have a clarified question. I, I kind of, I think you answered part of it. Amber had asked of when you're creating here a new project, does it automatically create a new Office 365 group? Like you just showed, you know, creation or adding to an existing. Yeah. So if, if I'm if I'm coming through as my primary, you know, my front end, and I'm creating here a project, it will you it will then generate a new Office 365 group? Yes, that's true. What are the other components that it creates with that? 
Um, so it right now it's just the Office 365 group. It does not create any channels. It does not create any of the Teams functionalities yet. But yeah. I know that's that's all being talked about and it and works. Yeah, they are talking for people that aren't aware. They are talking about uh, because if you're creating if you're creating a new Yammer community or a SharePoint site or a new team in Microsoft Teams, you you have different components that are you know it it generates a new Office 365 group and creates those other components across workloads. And they're talking about, uh, I don't know what they've decided, but they're trying to streamline that activity so that it's consistent. Yep. So. Yep. There, there is a lot of discussion going on, the security model of this. Um, again, referring back to my experience with current project online system, that the security model is incredibly complicated. Um, so they're putting them in the three Office 365 group structure simplifies it significantly. Yeah, we're all sitting with a giant bowl of popcorn and collectively eating and watching, <laughs> waiting for Microsoft to answer some of those things. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, all right, so, okay, so you can, then you can go ahead and assign durations. Obviously, durations is in days. So when I, that sooner, the, as soon as I pop in the duration, that's when the start and finish dates appear. Uh, the start date is obviously something we specified right here. So that's what it is picking from. Okay, you can always change that date. And then there are there is a work calendar set up in the background, which is eight hours a day, five days a week. So it is picking up the 40 hours from there. Okay, now one of the, uh, so this is, I would say this is V1 of the product. They are working on enhancements. So changing calendars is not as straightforward as it is. But there, that is on the highly request of highly needed features. So, um, so there are ways. Again, I will refer you to some blogs that will allow you, show you how you go behind the scenes and you can set up additional calendars that will maybe your teams are working only thirty hours a week, even though it's five days. So you can you can do that. Uh, but you can also adjust that here. I think so that so that kind of changes duration. So. Again, task types, one of the fundamental concepts of Microsoft Project where you, everything is either, uh, you can set it up to a fixed units, fixed duration, or fi fixed work. Right now, everything is a fixed duration setup. So there are discussions underway to allow you to change the type of the task. So if, if this looks like a simple SharePoint list, or a planner sheet or a tasks uh, list in Teams, um, that is the goal, okay? So the, the goal is to take away the complexity behind a uh, complex scheduling engine like Microsoft Project, but then not lose any of that functionality. So whatever you don't see here is being worked upon and will be added onto this, okay? Um, Let's talk about dependencies. So that's another thing that, uh, that people mostly request. Okay, so the, you can't have a project schedule without dependencies. So you can obviously do that. Um, so I'm going to just assign quickly some days here. Okay. And then you can start assigning dependencies. So so the nice thing about this is it will actually show you the tasks is a, instead of you having to type a number. Anybody who has worked with Microsoft Project know that you have to type in a number although in the 2016 version, they started doing this on the desktop version as well. Okay, I'm gonna just type it to define scope. Okay, and then I can also type in the number. Okay, so, hey, so it's the best of the both words. Hey, just just yep. uh, back just a second, because it's kind of related to what uh, the previous questions. Dave is asking, will the created group, so that's created when you generate a new project, will it be visible by SharePoint permissions? Or in other words, is it an email enabled group? Yes, it is. Yes, it is an email enabled group, and and it will it will show up in your Outlook, and uh, and, and I don't think a SharePoint site is created like it does for a standard Office 365 group, but I could be wrong on that one, so I'll, I can confirm that and let you know. But yeah, it is an email enabled group. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um. Okay, so moving on. All right. So now now that's the that's a grid view. Uh, I think I. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, so you can actually move tasks around. We can we we can do all all those nice things that are 
that are expected, right? It's, it, at this point, it's all basic stakes. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm excited to show is the timeline view. So, for people who are Gantt chart enthusiasts, uh, this is a timeline view. Uh, I believe Asana, uh, the comp competing product, has something like this. The nice thing about this is this, we, they're, uh, they're kind of, we're fondly referred to this as a visual planner, right? So I can actually move tasks. So I can, I can work with this board. I can assign and I can link this task directly from here to here. I need to be a little bit precise there. So I can take that and say, okay, I'm going to link it here. Um, again, all this exists in the desktop version of Microsoft Project. This does not exist in the, the web version, Project Online or Project Server. Um, so this to me is a much more dynamic way of assigning tasks or setting up dependencies. My personal favorite use case for this is, I, uh, and this goes back to one of the organizations I worked as a consultant, they had an entire room filled with these charts, which showed views like this. Um, they, they used to call it the visual planning board, which showed them this uh, four, four to five year roadmap of things they were working on and how they're all interconnected together. Now, obviously we have the roadmap feature to do that. Um, so, but then I'm, you can you say, take the same thing and say, I'm going, I can build a portfolio of projects with each line being a project and I can build my own visual planning board within this tool. Okay. And then I can move that around with, with the roadmap feature. I don't think you can move things around unless you change dates. So, so this is a much more interactive way of moving it. Um, so I have, I have seen people use this use case and, and, and be successful with it. So again, I know it not, it does not apply to everybody, but uh, I thought that was a fun like, um, experience to share. So, this, this, I, Microsoft put a lot of time into this. I know they are working on improving this experience as well. So the idea is you should be able to move tasks around as and when you need it as conveniently as you should be able to. And there are some Zoom features here back and forth. Okay. Um, now, this, this is my um, second most favorite from the bottom up. So my top most favorite on all this and which, which is where I bring, uh, I think the, the whole thing comes into um, you know, picture, big picture is the board view. Okay. Now, if you are a planner user, this seems like, oh, wow, I have seen this before. It is, um, it is, uh, it is already available. What's a big deal about it? Right. But it is a big deal because if you remember, if you see planner does today does not have the ability to set up dependencies. You can set up dependencies in this tool. Uh, planner today does not have the ability to um, add custom fields. There are so here the custom fields are being worked upon. That's a feature that that's being discussed right now. Okay, um, in planner you cannot set durations and efforts where and and think like a Microsoft project. Planner is supposed to be a very lightweight task management tool. You can definitely set due dates, a start date. Uh, you can move things around. Um, so. So this is attempting to bridge that gap where planner stops, this takes over. But what does the board view do for us in this kind of a mentality, right? So just like in planner, I can create buckets. So in this case, I'm going to call it sprint one, okay? Um, and then call it sprint two, and then sprint three. Now, obviously I can move this task. I'm going to say sprint three is go live, develop uh, and test, and then maybe design requirement or sprint one, et cetera, right? So the, and then, uh, and then define scope would be sprint one. Okay, so you can mark things complete from here. So I'm going to say I'm, I have done, I'm done with uh, completed uh, uh, of the scope scoping that actually marks the task complete in the grid. Okay, so now this actually is where the entire tool becomes collaborative. Until today, a project schedule, which is this, is the is is a project manager's ownership. The project manager updates the status. The project manager keeps the task updated. The project manager says when the tasks need to move, right? 
but then we have all been, I've been a project manager myself. I'm, I can save this for sure. We all have been guilty of this. We use project, the project schedule as something that is done after the fact. We complete, all the work is completed. Then we have a status meeting and everybody just raises their hand and said, yeah, I, yes, I'm done. And then you mark this complete. A little bit more savvy project managers try to use project as a predictor or a model for their for the project, and that's the that's the goodness that we are trying to get into it. The board view helps team members submit their updates directly in the tool. So the, so now you are you have a collaborative project team where the project teams are helping you set up these tasks where they need to be, move them around if they don't need to be. And, and, the, and they take away this um, schedule management part of the project management for you. Um, and all you have to, you have to make sure, which, is, which should be the true job of a project manager is to make sure the project and the work is done the way it is defined as part of the scope, right? So, um, so to me, this is where the rubber meets the road. And obviously there are enhancements coming to this view, adding more filters, grouping, filtering by people, filtering all the, now that this is all in the same ecosystem of planner teams and everywhere, it is not a, a big jump to assume that all those features will uh, travel back into this tool very soon. Okay. I've got a couple of questions. Maybe this is the right time for this. And I think related to what you just said in the relationship with planner. Um, so over on the live stream, Scott asks, uh, so this says uh, planner is very well integrated in teams almost all other project management tools have apps in teams. What is the best way to integrate uh, Microsoft project within teams? Because it seems to be missing from the list of apps. So I don't know if there, you can talk about that roadmap. And then I've got another question after this. Um, that's, a, that's a great segue into what I had next. Okay, so okay. let me bring this window. Maybe over. this is part of it too, kind of a part two as what Richard just asked here in the, in the uh, webinars is, does this integrate it at all with Team Foundation Server and Visual Studio? The answer to that would be no, as at least not that I know of. Um, so that, that I don't think that, um, at least I've not seen a roadmap that where it is backwards compatible or integration to the uh, other tools in that aspect. Okay. Um, so going back to the first question, so, the integration with teams okay so this is my team i set up a channel for my the other demo project that i have created um and then i'm using the same office 365 group when i set this up this team and the channel but now with in today's scenario yes if you are using microsoft project there's no way to put that into this but with this web-based version the schedule can, or the project schedule can live right within teams so and all the things that we just talked about are available right from here. And, and so I can be, I can show the board view and then this is where we can talk about um, uh, my, uh, just my, mind you, this is a different project than we just set, set up as sprints, but you can do the same thing here. So I can say sprint one. So you can uh, interact with this project schedule without ever actually leaving teams, uh, which fits into the Microsoft narrative, right? So. So that's that's a goal. So you can you can actually set up set this up so that all the team members can interact with this project schedule and help you manage this project in a collaborative manner. I hope that answers the question. Um, I'm I'm, on, I'm on trying to, I'll try and answer the follow up question to that. This setup is not automatic as of today. There are flows you could set up to do this. Um, again, uh, if you just do a quick Google search for anything for project for web, there are some uh, project MVPs, Paul Mather, uh, Antti, Pajnan. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna throw some names out there. Just look for uh, their blogs where they discuss how, how to use Power Automate and Power Apps to build this integration. Um, but there's nothing preventing from me manually adding. When I created the channel, I just went ahead and I decided to add a website and added the link. To the, and then boom, uh, everybody within that Office 65 group acts, gets access to this. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, we have 15 minutes left. So let me go back to this again. Um, all right, so I, I think this, uh, 
there, there are several filter options here. So um, there is a, there is a co-authoring capability here. That's another major win for this version. Again, there, if you have been using Project Online or Project Server, there is this check-in, check-out mechanism that has been built in. Um, so which actually causes us a lot of headache than actually it solves. And every single implementation I've been part of, and this that come, becomes actually a sore point, and we have to train users again and again and again to make sure they check the projects back in so that the reporting can happen and everything else can happen. With this version, that entire infrastructure is gone. There is no check-in, check-out. It is real-time. It is co-authoring capable, so more than one person can work the schedule at the same time. Obviously, there are conflicts. It handles very similar to how PowerPoint handles it. It throws up and says, here is the conflict. What do you want to pick, right? So because I don't have to use this, I can, I can demo that right now. But that, that, that is a major win uh, for, the, um, for this version of Microsoft Project. Okay. All yeah, in all, there are huge, several. That's a huge feature. Yeah, you were talking about <laughs> chasing people for task updates and not yeah. having to think about that. You know, let, let owners of the tasks be responsible. If you updated it or not, it's your own fault. It's not showing up with the latest numbers because you've not updated it. I don't yeah. have to, as the PM, chase you to do that. That's great. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, yeah, you make a very good point because that has been also, very, there's, there is functionality today, but that is, that is uh, so rudimentary that it doesn't really solve the problem. So, but, but this tool kind of helps with that. Um, so they have recently introduced a copy the project functionality. Um, they are talking about working through the baselining functionality, which is fundamental to my project scheduler or scheduling it and comparing your results. That is one of the things I sorely miss from Planner. It, um, it's, there is no easy way to say this is what we promised this will be complete by and now we have changed it unless you actually drill down deeper into the task and do all that magic. Right. So there are several features are coming. So even though this seems like a basic version today, I think it is very, very suitable for smaller organizations to just uh, jump in and start using it. Um, I want to go back to my presentation just for a minute and walk through the remaining things. So let's see. Okay. All right, so let's talk about some reporting. Okay, one of the, I mean, uh, reporting is a cornerstone for, um, for many of these implementations. One of the reasons you want to track your projects is to be able to provide insight to your team, your organization, your leadership, everybody in insight into uh, your, what your projects are doing. Um, again, with, with if you just start using Microsoft Project Desktop, then you are reporting at a project level and that is limited to you or your project team. If you are working with Project Online, there are several things that are out there that show you how to do reporting. Um, Microsoft already released a Power BI pack to help with reporting on Project for Web. Um, so this, what I'm showing on the screen are some snapshots from that um, reporting pack. Okay, so we got a portfolio dashboard view. This would be a good one for a PMO level kind of uh, people. And so, okay, here are all the projects that are happening within our particular team, our department, and the status, et cetera, et cetera. There are portfolio timelines. This is another, we used to build this in SSRS. I did that myself many times uh, and several other reporting tools. So Power BI does a great job of visualization. So you have that if you need that. Um, Portfolio milestones, you can list all the milestones, key milestones. I'm going to breeze through this uh, quickly so that um, the, what the takeaway should be from this should be there are many, many out of the box reports already available. Um, at the same, with the, in the same token, I will also say not every, these reports may not be a direct fit for the work you're doing, but you already have a good starting point. So maybe, you don't call them KPIs, you call them status indicators, you call them health, or you don't call them milestones, you call them reporting tags, whatever. So it's a, there's a good starting point to start with and then modify these reports to fit your needs, okay? So we got the resource dashboard. So all the resources you assign, you can take them and just analyze. So the resource management capabilities are still there. Um, they're not as advanced as we would like them to be. 
this entire infrastructure is actually connected to Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and so there is uh, so my, the project service that enables that is enabled Microsoft Dynamics kind of supports a lot of this stuff. So um, I did not touch upon any of the automation part of it or customization part of it. Uh, that would be a good topic for a different webinar. But Power Apps would be your go-to source if you want to delve deeper and start tinkering with how you want the tasks to look, how you want the screens to look. If you have a stage gate methodology, how do you incorporate this into that kind of method? So Power Apps is your answer, okay? Um, so moving on, resource dashboard, resource assignments, uh, task overviews, project timeline, which is interesting. So you got a timeline within project. Well, one of the most popular views within Microsoft project was this project timeline. So since you don't have that on the project for web, you can get that directly uh, from this Power BI pack. Okay. All right. Um, before I, I have to only two more slides left. Any other questions I did not answer? Nope, nothing, nothing yet. Okay. Um, so a quick feature comparison. I got directly this from directly from Microsoft website. So um, as you can see, Planner has the task management, board view, and team and assignments. We talked about that. Project for Web takes it a little bit further with roadmaps, scheduling, dependencies, Gantt chart, and all that. And then if you are heavily into portfolio management, portfolio analysis, a much more deeper dive into resource management, baselining, your answer still for a few, for a short while it's still going to be project online. So um, the goal for Microsoft is to bring these two on par at some point. Uh, I don't have any timelines or commitments, but that's what I understand. But that's where the roadmap is going. So one of the things uh, that came up when I did this webinar last time, and I wrote a couple of blog posts around it, is um, if I am if I'm in a position where I am looking to upgrade from an on-prem version to Office 365 project solutions, which version should we go? Right now, Project for Web and Project Online are sitting side by side. They both are available or from uh, based on your subscription. So my suggestion would be to look at this feature comparison. If the things that are missing from Project Web are absolutely critical for you, that's a no brainer. I think you should go with project online at the loss of this cool slick functionality. But the nice thing about that is moving from project online to project for web. Um, looks like Microsoft is thinking of some kind of a migration path migration tool. So hopefully you can get started with project online and then move on to project for web. I would not delay the move to office 365 because there is so much you can achieve through the integration with Teams, uh, the web apps, the, the, the words, uh, the word PowerPoint and all that, all the other things that the Yammer, all the other things, nice things that go about with that Office 365 suite. So that's the um, thought I would answer that since that came up in, in the last webinar. Okay, some resources. Um, so there is an, everything I covered is an, in, that, uh, in that link, Intro for Project for Web and the comparison. Customizing, this link actually provides you all the tools you need to customize this. This is heavily customizable. This is all connecting to a common data service in the behind the scenes. So you can build a database, work through it, and build your own apps to interact with the data in the database uh, and make Project for Web as part of your process uh, and then add-ons and build add-ons to it. Many people are already doing it. So take a look at that link. And then the power, the BI power, the power BI pack I walked through is at that link. Okay. Um, I think with that, I am done, Chris. Um, I will, I'll see if any, anybody has any more feedback, comments, thoughts, questions, anything is welcome. Yeah, no other, other questions. Really appreciate your, your time. And I know we're, we're, we're the last couple of minutes and I, one thing I, I do want to say again, uh, we're recording. So, oh, we do have a couple of questions that popped in, but I'll just say really quickly. We uh, uh, so we will have the recording out. I'll have it out this afternoon. Make it available out in uh, in, in Facebook, of course, and and uh, through the social channels and and uh, post uh, uh, the make the recording available in the next uh, newsletter for the Microsoft User Group Utah. A uh, couple of questions that came in. Um, let's see. Uh, so Scott asked if you could share the names of the blogs that cover the team schedule integration again. 
Um, so Paul Mather is one of um, a very close friend and he does a lot of this customization kind of blogs. So why don't I do this, Chris? When I send you this PowerPoint deck, I'll also list out the names and their, their blogs so that you can include them in your blog post. That'd be great. And uh, for everybody too, and I'll, I'll post this out tonight to my uh, blog up on buckleyplanet.com. So I'll have a, a link to the, the recording on the YouTube channel as well as the slides uh, as soon as uh, he makes those available to me. A um, couple other questions. Let's see. Um, Pablo asks, uh, do you know if they have any plans for adding baselines or critical paths? Yes. Um, again, I, ca I can't comment on any timelines, but I, I, we have had discussions where baselines are being looked into. Uh, I don't know about the critical path, though. I don't have any information on that one, but baselines for sure. Okay. Any final questions from the audience? I'm going to see if there's anything out on the live stream. Nothing else on the live stream? Yep. Well, Prasada, well, thank you so much for taking the time and, and uh, sharing with the group. And I know that there's been, a, as we were talking before, you know, a couple of weeks back, there's been a lot of questions, a lot of the interest in this, uh, this content. I'm sure we'll have a lot of views and downloads uh, from the web as well. So really appreciate your time today and for everybody for participating. So thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. See you later.